Welcome to the Climber Dad channel. Today we are going to be doing some route setting, but it's going to have a little bit of a twist. I don't know if I've told you, but I, I had vertigo. I came down with vertigo. I was uh, brought into the ER room. It was so bad I could barely stand, and I mean barely stand with support. From that time, which has been about two months ago, I haven't really climbed. So route setting is going to be a little bit of a challenge. The techniques and the things that you need to do when you're route setting are going to stay the same. They will remain the same. I should be able to do something. Stick around and we'll get this route setting done. I'm going to teach you some of those basics that I still know. However, I really don't know if I'm going to have the skill and the ability to apply them. But I will share them with you. Let's start. Oh yeah! Got my harness on, and then I got my gear laid out right here. Let me show you some of the gear that I bring. So I normally don't bring this many locking carabiners, but. You need, you need a, a good amount of locking carabiners. You need a static line is always helpful to use when you're route setting. You need at least one ascender and then one auto locking belay device like the Gree Gree or the Mad Rock lifeguard. Safeguard would actually work even better for Mad Rock. Also have a uh, Petzl Traxion. Oh man, I totally forgot to grab some eye bolts, so I'm gonna run over here to a local hardware store, grab some eye bolts. How's it going over here? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh good, local hardware store, fantastic. So I need to get a 3 8 inch eye bolt. Oh yeah, that's a good selection. Yep, we need a 3 8 16 thread, gonna be right up here, probably that guy right there. Okay, so I wanted to just show you how you're going to set up this rope. The easiest way that I know how to set up this rope anyways for route setting. Uh, we've got two strands in the belay bar out there that we just came down from. Uh, so I'm going to pull the inside of the rope down. This also depends on the length of your rope. But here the ropes are cut really nice as far as the length. They are... Um, three times the length of the wall. Just a little bit more than that, which is perfect. So now I've got my tail on the outside, up about by my chest, and then I'm gonna tie a middleman knot or a butterfly knot right here on this rope. So how I tie that is I put one twist. Can you see the rope okay? So I put one twist, two twists. Now I take my bite right here and I fold it down so it's on the other side of the rope. And then right here where those twists are, it opens up to be a hole. Do you see that? I'm gonna pull a little bit more through. And then I'm gonna take my bite, I'm gonna wrap it around the rope, and come right through that hole. Now there's different ways to tie the butterfly knot or the middleman knot. That's how it needs to look. Now that we've got our middleman knot on there, I'm going to take the tail on the outside of the belay bar and I'm going to go right through that middleman knot and then I'm going to pull it up. And it's going to go right up against that belay bar and now it's nice and secure. It's not coming down. Now I have a line right here that I can climb up and work on this side as long as I'm not hauling up something heavier than me or even half of my weight. I can use this as a haul line. So I've got my secure line right here that I'm going to climb on and then a haul line as long as it's not like massive weight that you're carrying up. All right, so we've got our rope set up. We're starting to set right now. Now, technically, he could be on a ladder right now, and you could probably get away with setting this whole wall on a ladder, but we're going to use ropes. I'm starting to set this orange one right here, and the way that I'm doing it is I'm going to set up 
something visually appealing, and then I'm going to climb into it, and then I'm going to climb out of it. So I think that that's looking pretty good. I might actually want to change this one just a little bit, but I like how it swoops up there. Because of my son Connor, that's me. He just works down the road, actually at Colonial Hardware, as you know, because we went over there to see him. I'm gonna take him out to lunch. I'm gonna take both of my older boys that's out to nice. lunch. <laughs> Time to go to the soda shop. After lunch, we were able to go back to over yonder and continue to route set. Now I want to take a minute and share with you my experience as a route setter. I have never been a full-time route setter. However, I have been trained in route setting. I have owned my own climbing gym and worked as the head route setter in several different scenarios, but never full-time. I was always wearing multiple hats when I was in that position. But because of that background, I've been able to really look at some of the different techniques. And I have been critiqued by a full-time route setter, and I think he was pleasantly surprised as he went through this video. He made his own video. It's called Dojo Setting, and if you see it, check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. There's three things that you need to focus on to set the perfect route. Those three things are safety, engagement, and technique. So let's talk about safety. With safety, you need to be concerned about the climber's safety, which I think should be obvious, but a lot of times it's not. When you get in that moment and you're route setting, you're just thinking about those movements and those fun things that you want to do and accomplish. It's easy to set that aside of where those fall zones are for the climber and the positions that they may be in. Are they going to hit something if they fall in this position or swing into a wall, that's something that you really need to consider as you are route setting. You also need to consider your own safety. When you're using ladders, don't exceed their limits. Don't bring too much up the ladder that you can't handle that. And don't stack a bunch of stuff on the ladders either. You also need to worry about everyone around you and their safety. If you're 30 feet up in the air and you have a bucket that is loaded down with climbing holds and bolts and you weren't smart enough to change that wire handle to a sling or a rope and it breaks, think about those work zones that you're going to be in and be aware of those that are around you. The second thing to help you get that perfect set is engaging the climber. Understand who you're setting for. Is this going to be a new climber or an old climber? Somewhere in between? Are they going to be young or old? Short? Tall? Keep it in mind and sometimes it can be hard. Now engaging the climber is not just knowing the climber. You also want it to be aesthetically pleasing. A climber will first climb a route in a gym with their eyes. They're going to look at the starting hold, they're going to follow it through. If you can make a route that is aesthetically pleasing to the eyes, it's going to capture them. They might not even know why it captured them, but it's going to capture them and engage them immediately when they see it. So that is important. Now the flow and the technique 
is also very important. And that brings us into the third part of having a perfect set is the technique. You want to try to lock in your moves and force specific movements when you're route setting. Try to figure out ways to make this go down only one way. You also want to be aware of your strengths in climbing as a route setter so you're not continually setting the same things. This happens all the time in big gyms with route setting teams and it's because they're just not aware. You need to be able to have diverse movement. The third thing from technique and this might be going away a little bit, but I like to see inspiration from outdoors and take inspiration from my outdoor climbing trips, from the past experiences that I've had in climbing itself, because that's what it's about to me. It's not necessarily about climbing on man-made plastic and materials. It's really about that movement and flow that you can get into when you are climbing outdoors and I try to bring that indoors. There's another place that you can get inspiration from in techniques and that's climbing videos. I usually will watch several videos minimum before a route setting session just to get a little bit more inspiration and because I haven't been climbing very much lately I definitely got out some old videos and watched those before this session. I hope that that helps you with your route setting. Before I go, I also want to encourage you to create a plan. Know the terrain that you're setting on, know the climbing holds that you have and that you'll be able to use and create a plan. And then stay flexible with that plan because as you're setting it, things may change and things may happen where it's going to work better if you're able to be a little bit flexible with that plan. Thanks for watching Climber Dad. I really appreciate it. I have some links down in the description below that if you follow those, they're affiliate links and that will help out the channel. I also sell build plans that helps out the channel as well. And I'd really appreciate it if you would check that out. Climberdad.com, there will be a full list of gear or equipment that you need to be a successful route setter. Go check that out as well. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share it with your friends, and I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad. So I can share it. Why? Because I want to share it. <laughs> Why? Because it's important. I do want to be authentic on my channel. You probably were recording the whole thing, weren't you? I wish I was recording the whole thing. <laughs> All right. I gotta, sh I gotta, can I share, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with them what you just said. So my wife, I, it, it's important to me that I am authentic and that you understand who I am through these videos as well. That's, that's a big part of this is a, is a connection and being real. That, that's the cool thing about YouTube. It's not just glitz and glamour and all these cool things. It's, it's, it's real life. My wife just said that I'm way too bubbly and I speak too fast and I, I have to catch up to my thought, which is totally true. I have to catch up to what I'm saying because normally I speak really slow. I, I'm, I live in the South. I am not Southern. I wasn't born in the South, but I'm, a, I'm an adopted Southerner and we speak real slow. Well, and you're from the country. I am from the country. Right. Like, even yes. though you're not from the South, you're from the country. That's true. We just like to take our time <laughs> when we speak. And maybe I'm being a little more slow yeah, than normally I now. Really <laughs> <laughs> but I do, tr I do try to be authentic. And you're not too anything. You're just... I'm trying to deliver some energy yeah, and yeah. enthusiasm when I'm recording. Right, and you just have way more energy than you would normally have in a normal conversation, yes. Alright. It's not too, you're not too much or anything like that. It's just different. Just different. There's the truth. I, I've actually heard this from a lot of YouTubers that 
uh, when the camera turns on, they are a different person. Uh, Alex still talked about it when he was uh, up in Montana uh, doing videos with Will. Will was very reserved and Alec was very bubbly and it, and they said in real life they're opposite. That was funny. And so, you know, but there's the truth. 